Und ganz besonders freue ich mich darüber, dass ich heute meinen irischen Amtskollegen Michael Higgins hier in Berlin begrüßen darf zum Auftakt eines Staatsbesuches, eines außerordentlich umfangreichen Staatsbesuches, über den ich mich, über den wir uns sehr freuen. Vier Länder in drei Tagen wird Präsident Higgins besuchen und dabei nicht nur in Berlin sein, sondern ebenso in Leipzig, in Frankfurt und in Würzburg. Ein sehr umfangreiches, Herr Kollege Präsident, aber wie ich finde, auch sehr interessantes Programm, das Sie vor sich haben und wir freuen uns wirklich, dass Sie sich gemeinsam mit Ihrer Frau so viel Zeit nehmen für unser Land. President Steinmeier, it has been a privilege and a pleasure to be able to respond to your invitation to make a state visit as President of Ireland to your country and to your people. So may I express my deepest thanks for the gracious hospitality that you have shown to myself and to Sabina and to all those who are travelling with me. I very much valued our meetings this morning and your kind words just now have highlighted once again the strong and enduring partnership that exists between our two countries and our peoples. And it is a partnership that is based on the most fundamental of our shared European values. Ireland as an island nation has a history of migration and interaction with cultures and influences from across the seas. And I'm very grateful for the opportunity to celebrate too the achievements and impact that the Irish diaspora has had on Germany. But Germany itself has long occupied a position at the centre of our continent, not only geographically, but also, as we discussed, at the crossroads of the movements of people and ideas. And as President of Ireland, I take pleasure in the opportunity to pay tribute to your country's long and splendid history in this development of intellectual thought, language and music. President Steinmeier, we meet at a time of great change and of great challenges. And at times like this, it is important to be able to appreciate the great wisdom and the painful lessons of our shared past. We very much appreciate in Ireland the fact that our international reputation for natural high quality food and drink and ingredients and of those who have worked to gain and retain that reputation, they deserve our thanks. There has been little less than a, a huge transformation upwards in practically every aspect of, of food production and quality. I think last year Irish food and drink were exported to over 180 countries across the world. 
which is the proof of the reputation. And we're pleased by the continuing growth. You have heard the figures already from Donald uh, about that Irish food enjoys uh, uh, in Germany. Germany is our fifth largest market for, for Irish food and drink, and, and very particularly for our beef and dairy products. And I've had an opportunity of tasting uh, the beef just a few moments ago. Farming is an important, essential part of Irish life. And when I say farming, I mean living in, 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 in the conditions that Irish rural life uh, uh, provides. It's with great dedication that we produce the premier products that are enjoyed by the many millions of people in those 180 countries all over the world. Fifty-six years ago, Ireland opened its first trade office in Germany in 19, uh, uh, 1962. Uh, it was just in the 1958 to 1963 as the first program for economic expansion, usually associated with Dr. Whitaker. And in that second last year of that, before you moved to the second program for economic expansion, the office was opened, and uh, its exports from Ireland to Germany at that time stood at six million. Uh, and, and today, uh, somebody was pointed out to me that these experts at that time were in livestock and sewing machines. Uh, we have, in fact, uh, moved on. I think uh, today Germany is Ireland's third largest export for goods. And uh, Enterprise Ireland tell me that there are 600 innovative bank companies that are successfully selling over a billion uh, uh, of their goods and services into the German market. Verehrte Gäste, Deutschland hat Irland viel zu verdanken. Nach dem Zweiten Weltkrieg nahmen irische Familien hunderte Kinder aus Deutschland auf, um sie vor Hunger und Not zu bewahren. Und im Jahr 1990 spielte Irland mit seinem damaligen Vorsitz im Rat der Europäischen Gemeinschaften eine wichtige Rolle bei der Vollendung der Deutschen Einheit. Für all das, Herr Präsident, sind wir Deutsche Ihnen unendlich dankbar und ich versichere Ihnen, wir bleiben es. Unsere besondere Verbundenheit zeigt sich auch in Ihrem Besuch, einem Besuch bei Freunden. Bei Ihnen in Irland würde man sagen, das Auge eines Freundes ist ein guter Spiegel. One of the great advantages of one of the most extraordinary experiences of being President of Ireland is the conversations that I've been able to have with different elements of the Irish public over the last seven years. But I want to thank you, President, for you, not just your warm words this evening, but for, the very, for in issuing me the invitation to Sabina and I uh, to visit Germany and the German people, and to say what pleasure it has given me, and uh, what pleasure it is with the wonderful experience we've had in this first day, those who travel with me. I've been very struck during this day at the extraordinary welcome that there has been for intellectual ideas. 
because I had some distance in recent times in the European Union, I felt that the European Union was selling its short, self short by neglecting its rich intellectual tradition. And as somebody as a university teacher for a long number of years, it would be impossible to teach the subjects of political science, social science, or of, uh, of, of philosophy without acknowledging the contribution of German scholarship. I sometimes in my speeches recently about the European Union refer to the Vententene Accord, those brave people, Rossi and Spinelli and others, who in a moment looked out and thought of what a Europe free of war forever would be like. And a Europe free of war forever must in fact be a Europe that is expressed positively into European harmony and in peace. And in harmony too with the different issues of nature and the artifact something that, as I've suggested, is putting together, and I will speak in Leipzig, about putting together the requirements of a new model, set of models that will combine ecology and ethics and environment and, uh, and economy, economia. As evidenced by the Polina, creating the new in the shadow of the past, building for the future, while recognizing all that has gone before, and using the materials available in present time, is a challenge well known and well understood in Leipzig. An ethical engagement with the past, in all its complexity, is an unavoidable moral, but I believe enabling task that allows the light to illuminate the present enables us to see the imagined forms of what could be better in the Kantian sense and invite us to a more harmonious existence. Help us, it were, help us, surely, in seeking a future of fulfillment. As I have said, I visited Leipzig in the past and am aware of its cultural heritage. And indeed, the city of Leipzig has played a significant role, not only in German history, but in European history. But this visit, as I have said, the one I make today is the first ever state or official visit by an Irish president, Uchtrana Heren, to Saxony, or indeed anywhere in the eastern part of Germany other than Berlin. So I truly hope that my visit will initiate a renewed and deeper relationship both with you and your neighbouring states. My visit as the President of Ireland reflects Ireland's commitment to the deepening and widening of the Irish presence throughout Germany. Quite frankly, our wish is to forge and deepen new friendships. Despite the many historic achievements of our continent, many centuries of which were tarnished by war and suffering, the European Union today still retains and has available to it through its legacy of thought, a commitment to intellectual discourse, an openness to undo the trammels of empire and struggle against imperialism, a unique opportunity and responsibility to assert and, where necessary, reassert its founding values of democracy, cohesion, shared prospects, human rights, the rule of law in an increasingly interdependent world in which these values are challenged. These values are neither abstract, nor are they optional extras, nor are they confined by borders. They go to our very core and must be respected and upheld by all member states. And central to these values and their vindication is the concept and circumstance of free movement of people exercising their hopes bringing with them their stories and their cultural endowments. And what a great, great gesture Erasmus was in that regard. Indeed, migration inwards and outwards has been a key aspect of European history for centuries. Migration was taking place long before the origins of the common market and the European economic community. Migration inwards and outwards has shaped who we are as Europeans, our influences, our values, our sensibilities, Indeed, it has been part of our prosperity.
I should say to you that another reason why, in fact, all of this intense activity is taking place, I think it's best to be frank, we're anxious to extend and deepen our bonds of friendship with uh, the German people. And that was realised by the representative of the Irish government who's been accompanying me on the state visit, the Thornish, their Deputy Prime Minister, Minister for Foreign Affairs and Trade, Simon Coveney, to whom I'm very grateful, because it was he who commissioned the special study on how, in fact, it was both necessary and urgent for Ireland to deepen its connection with the German people. I'm not going to say too much more except to say from all of those Irish people who are gathered here, and even more, the people who are interested in Ireland and the people who have been friends of the people, of the friends of the Irish, that it gives great pleasure when we are travelling abroad, Sabine and I, to have an opportunity of meeting you all and uh, thanking you for what, how you represent Ireland. Ireland has always been a country that has had migration at its core. I sometimes found it, I found it very interesting to see the reaction when I say to people that in the 1901 census, of all those born on the island of Ireland, the entire island, more were living outside of the island of Ireland than on the island of Ireland. Migration has been a part of our identity and it has taken several forms from times when it was involuntary and we're fleeing from distress. But now also those of you who are, have been in Berlin and seen those magnificent young Irish people and all the genres who are contributing particularly in the cultural area, and yourselves, the business people I've met already during these last three days, and the bright people who take the risks that are inevitable in business and who have established a reputation for integrity and trust with their German partners. And I'm proud of you as, I, as, as President of Ireland for what you are contributing to this modern version of Ireland. So if our member numbers are small in Germany, 14,000 or whatever, and that's another one of them ringing now. I should say to you, you have made a very, very significant contribution. <laughs>